Hey, it's Logan. Every once in a while, I have the epiphany that I can just do whatever the hell I want, usually when I'm in the shower. And right now, I want to make a video about Gary's mod maps. Review videos aren't going away, they're still going to be my main focus, I just figured I'd try something different. This video is going to be a lot calmer than my other ones. I'm not going to raise my voice or get mad about something. Probably. I'm trying to set a mood. Is it working? You see, if I use my typical narration style, it's going to cause some narrative dissonance. We're looking at some surreal workshop maps today. Gary's mod maps, and by extension most user-made content for games, are some of the most intriguing, stimulating, and healthy forms of media out there. They're sort of like the open access television of PC gaming. You just never know what you're going to get. The reason that these maps are so appealing to me personally is because I'm just really into spaces, and in video games, the possibilities for the types of spaces you can explore are basically limitless. Old lighthouses? We got them. Wide open, sun-drenched fields with gorgeous clouds up ahead? Step right up. Eerie post-Soviet landscapes? Chuck E. Cheese? Deep space? They're all just a few clicks away, man. It's crazy. I gravitate towards Gary's Mod specifically because it's so easy to make and download custom maps. One thing some of you might know about me is that I actually spent a lot of my earlier years making Gary's Mod maps, and I actually still do get the urge sometimes. Here's one that I made for the Half-Life 2 mod Entropy Zero 2. Here's one I made of a bathhouse in Budapest and actually published on the workshop. And here's one I made when I was 12. I have this thing where I hardly ever finish these things, but making them is so much fun that it doesn't even matter. My point is, since it's so easy to make and share maps for Gary's Mod, there's a lot of adventures to be had on its workshop page, so I've downloaded a few of them to check out for this video. We're just going to explore, take in the sights, and try to catch a vibe. I can also say out front that there will be no jump scares in this entire video. Some of the maps might be creepy, but they're not going to be outright scary. Some of the most evocative and transcendent types of Gmod maps are the creepy ones. Not the scary ones. Any dickhead can put a jump scare trigger in a dark, narrow hallway. It takes a certain finesse, a certain grasp of ambience and mood to capture what I'm talking about. I'm talking about that eerie, dreamlike, where the hell are we feeling. You know, that feeling that's very close to nostalgia, but not quite the same. You can find plenty of it in certain stretches of Half-Life 2 and Subnautica. If you crank the volume up and just kind of immerse yourself in the wilderness in Red Dead Redemption 2, you can find that feeling in a lot of places there. It's actually quite a rare feeling to find, but here on the Gmod Workshop, it's fairly abundant, and I think a lot of it is due to that old Source Engine feeling. You know the one. The first map on our itinerary tonight is GM underscore Hangout by Alex. No workshop description. I'm creeped out already. To start off, though, we're put in a lovely little photo booth area. How cute. So, naturally, I go for the bowling alley floor first, and it's like... It's like each one of them has an aura? I can't describe it. Look. And they're all different. This one's creepy, this one's inspirational, this one's just wet. This neon one I was fully expecting to blast me with the wubbubs of early 2010s dubstep, but nah, it's pretty tranquil. I take a photo with all of them. Well, most of them. I'm brave, but I'm not Weezer Booth brave. Next door, past a weird hedge, there's a pool, but no floaties. And the showers have no heads. I guess it's chlorine for dinner. I swim to the bottom of the pool, and, uh, there's a QR code. <laughs> Alright, I'll bite. Oh dear, yep, that's a wasp. Oh, that shit sounded crunchy as hell. Is he okay? Where is this kid's mom? He didn't even wince. Alrighty then, um, well, that was certainly unexpected. Luckily for us, there's a group therapy room that we can use to vent about the wasp kid. There's also a sauna. It's got a certain charm to it. It keeps going and going and going. With a keen eye, you'll realize that it's just teleporting you back to the beginning of the room each time you go through the hallway. If you no-clip through, though, there actually is something here. A machine spitting out Morse code. The Morse code, when translated, gives out a YouTube URL, I think, but the video is removed. Probably just a video of a bird eating a monkey or something, though, if we're staying consistent. I also found this button. Pressing it doesn't seem to do anything. 
It's probably just taking a month off my life every time I press it though, so I'll stop at three. I already gave a few months to Tom Kenny to get my cat back. Hey, wait a minute. Oh, thank god. I thought it was going to be loss when looked at from above. Man, as I walk through these spaces, I can't shake the feeling that something is wrong. I can't place what it is, but something's rubbing me the wrong way, and not knowing exactly what it is is way worse. While I was climbing this tower, I was fully expecting something to happen, but the only thing that happened was I reached the top. Huh. It wasn't fruitless, though. While I was up here, I placed a camera, and lo and behold, was able to find out what that button did. It opens up this thing on the floor, which exposes a lift that- Whoa. She's a bit quick. We go down, and down, and down. Shit. Okay. I want to go back upstairs now, but I can't find a way back up that doesn't involve either no-clipping or killing myself, so I guess I choose death. When I respawn, it looks like I'm in a pretty good representation of a Taco Bell. Although, I have to dock points for realism because there's no employee crying in the bathroom. Man, they don't even have the grilled cheese burrito, which is like one of the only Taco Bell items that's worth a shit. And on that note, I'm out. Ah, <sighs> this is nice. You know, when you find yourself sitting on the roof of a Taco Bell absolutely mesmerized by that all-too-familiar luminescent bell, I think it's time to move on. This map is interesting to say the least. It's unsettling in the most subtle way. It feels like a experiment. And the wasp kid. My god, like, dude, just grab a string cheese or a smuckers from the fridge or something. You don't have to be going around eating wasps. It would be purely contrarian for me to do a video about Gary's mod maps and not include liminal spaces or backrooms content. They make up a good-sized chunk of the maps that evoke this eerie, nostalgic feeling that we're talking about. So the whole liminal space thing took off in like 2020 or something? And since then, the Gary's Mod Workshop has seen more than its fair share of this style of space. It makes sense, though. The literal definition of a liminal space is a space that's in transition to its next state. So like, an abandoned store, or an empty playground or something. But I think we need a refresher on that definition. Liminal spaces have seen the most success, by far, in video games. It's because video games are the only medium that allows accurate representation of space. You can walk around in it, you can interact with it. These liminal spaces can't be defined strictly by spaces in transition, I don't think. At least, not after the internet got a hold of the term. Most of what you'll see online labeled as a liminal space is just images of rooms that don't make a lot of sense, but are believable enough to exist. This is exactly what we're getting with this next map, GM Liminal Gallery by Shady Milk. Immediately after arriving, it's clear that the creator is intent on doing exactly what you think, providing a gallery of liminal spaces, a showcase of eerie, illogical 3D spaces that make you wonder and ponder. So come with me, and let's get sucked into these exhibits, shall we? First thing we see are some shitty AI images generated by a very early model by the looks of things. So early, in fact, that you can scarcely tell what the items are. I guess that's eerie in a way. The presentation is great, though. It's like a Star Wars room or something. OSHA would have an absolute hemorrhage with this walkway, though. Dropping down in a hole, we have our fall broken by, like, two feet of water, Minecraft style. There's a bunch of ways to go. I'm gonna pick this one. Ooh. Ah. Ooh. Aha. There it is. Only a matter of time until you find the pool rooms. Here we are. Pool rooms is like an offshoot of the whole back rooms aesthetic. It's pretty eerie. Why is there water here? Where did it come from? Is it safe to drink? Here's a little thought experiment. As we explore, try to think. If you blinked, and you were just randomly teleported here, how long would you be able to survive? Assuming you appear after the fall we had, because let's be realistic, you would probably die pretty fast from a fall like that, even if there was more water. So we've got water here. Humans need that to survive, I think. 
To stay healthy, you'd have to drink around two and a half quarts of water per day. So 2.5 times 365, that's about 912 quarts of water you'd need for a year, or 228 gallons. By taking some quick measurements using props, I find that the water is roughly two gallons deep. We can solve this with some quick hot dog math. Taking the volume of this larger section, we calculate length times width times height. 70 gallons times 58 gallons times 2 gallons equals 8,120 gallons. So if we add that to the volume of the smaller section, which comes out to 2,520 gallons, we have 10,640 gallons of water here. But wait, we haven't taken into account these pesky pillars, nor the triangle of water on the ramp. Ah, uh, no biggie. We can get the volume of the triangle of water here with the formula length times width divided by 2 times the height. Or... 26 gallons times 11 gallons divided by 2 gallons, which comes out to 286 gallons. Now the volume of each of these cylinders is, say it with me now, pi r squared times height. So we've got a radius of, mm, let's say 3.5 gallons and a height of 2. Plugging these numbers into the equation, it comes out to 77 gallons per pillar. Five pillars added up, the pillars make 385 gallons of water. So, in summary, we've got 8,120 plus 2,520 plus 286 minus 385, 10,541 gallons of water. Drinking 228 each year, this room alone would give you 46.2 years of water. Depending on how old you are, you might just be set for life with this room alone. And what's more is just around the corner, there's more water. So yeah, I'd say you have enough water to live down here. The only issue is finding a way to boil it. Because even once the chlorine evaporates, which only takes about a day, it's stagnant. There's no flow. This water will be swimming with microorganisms very soon, if it's not already. And hey, what's this right around the corner? That's right, a toilet. Hell yeah. So that means you wouldn't have to turn one of these water holes into your dumping ground. And what's even better is there's a bed here too. So we have water, a toilet, a place to rest. Shit, all that's left is food and maybe some entertainment. Let's keep on exploring and we'll count the food along the way. I'm having fun. Continuing on, we're greeted by a fairly normal office space. Lots of desks, stacks of paper and whatnot. Huge Stanley Parable vibes here. Honestly, not a bad place to spend some time. It's pretty relaxing until you get to... The pit. Yeah, I'd add this to our water supply, but there's no way you're getting back out of there if you fall down, so you'd best be real careful if you come out here to take a leak or something. Lest you fall down and spend the rest of your days floating on your back, wishing you had just used the toilet like a normal human being. Or, you know, you get consumed by the darkness. The deep, dark, foreboding darkness. Returning to normal world, there's your company-mandated wall furniture, and in this door is a bunch of books. What are they? Let's see. You could learn Java. That's fun. We all love Java, right? You could read about, um, discrete time signaling. I don't know what that is. The rest of these are all too low resolution, but it's safe to assume they're pretty dry, so probably no Tolkien or Mark Twain or anything like that. Still, better than nothing at all. You're gonna need every bit of something made by a human to stay sane down here. And oh ho ho, what's this? A vending machine? Hell yeah. Looks a little low, but again, we take what we can get. I could see myself spending lots of time in this room here. It's pretty comfy. Actually, I'd probably just take the books to somewhere more scenic, like the art gallery or the bedroom. If I was sticking around in here, I'd just be tempted non-stop by the salty snacks just beyond the glass screen, and you'd want to save those for holidays and special occasions. Down the hall is the set of That's So Raymond, so that's another point for entertainment. You could act out all your favorite scenes. This fear thingy is creeping me out. I don't remember it from the show. Although I did skip season four. I would not be at all surprised to find out that it's like capturing my dreams for energy or some shit. And hey, here's a forklift. That's endless fun right there. If you're certified, that is. Safety first, guys. Come on. If we return to the Nexus, there's more doors to try. I'm curious about the stars one. There's really not too much going on in here, actually. 
It does seem like a great place to hold a children's birthday party, though. The Red 40 Zoomies would go off in these big-ass hallways. Just don't let them in the forklift room. Yeah, see? It already got one. Shit is not safe, man. Ooh, a projection room and an old computer. If this thing works, we're in business. Assuming it does work, this would not be a bad place to spend your time at all. Man, it really does feel like a dream in here. There's absolutely no sound other than the doors we open and the sounds of our footsteps. And there's a cafe connected to the theater. With the lights off. See what I mean? It's so specific and illogical, but not impossible. Whew. It's starting to feel kind of weird. So in this next wing, we have access from this... Um... Huh. Okay. Through the left door, the corridors lead us to some kind of waiting room. The clock is stuck at 1. PM or AM? Beware of dog. Okay. Yeah, he looks mean. Oh, hey, it's Dr. Breen. Whoa. Uh, hey, Raymond. Okay, I'll be honest. This is the first section I feel like I'm being watched in, guys. I'm not kidding. It's unsettling. Well, here's a stove. That's our solution to making the water potable. Yeah, I don't like it here. I'm dubbing this area the creepy wing. Something's here that doesn't want us to be. If you get stuck down here, take the stove and board this place up. The next and final branch of the main area immediately graces us with a laundry room, so if we were surviving down here, we could do laundry. And here I was thinking we'd have to wash our clothes in the void room. Ah, silly me. We're good. Oh, look at this bathroom. It's lovely. Only thing it needs is a shower head, but I mean, I'll take a bath if that's all I'm gonna get. Holy crap, this is goddamn perfect. It's a bona fide bachelor pad. No, wait, it's a two bedroom? Sign me the hell up. I found the home base for this little thought experiment for sure. There's a kitchen, a TV, and oh, is that for me? TPS reports from January of 99? Sick. The only problem is, well, Outside. Look. It's nothing. No stars, no clouds, no mood, and not a sound to be heard. If you can get past that, though, this place is excellent. It's like the map reached into my mind, saw that I was thinking about staying here, and crafted the perfect living space, just for me. Uh, it's like the map wants me to stay. Does anyone else taste metal? Wow, what a fucking cool map. There's a reason liminal spaces and back rooms took off the way it did, and stuff like this is a huge part of that. So many weird, cool, sort of eerie ideas crammed into one big map to explore. And hey, you know what? I'm gonna say it perfectly livable. I mean, it's no palace, but it has everything you need. Lots of water, a way to boil it, places to sleep, places to make peepees. It even has a TV, books, and a computer for when you get bored of walking around and taking in the spectacle. The only issue I see with surviving down here is food. There's lots to be had in terms of forage. The vending machine, the sodas in the trash cans that I'm sure have a sip or two left in them. There's lots of freezers and refrigerators, too. I think it's okay to assume that there's some leftover takeout in there or something. Maybe some lean cuisines? And there's lots of watermelon to go around. I think the strategy would be to eat the watermelon first, since it won't last long, and plant the seeds in the grass room with the bench, and water them a lot. It won't be hard because there's lots of water right outside. If you can get a watermelon farm going and survive off of snacks and grass until that point, oh baby, you're in business. Speaking of watermelons, I noticed that there's a suspiciously large number of them dotting the map, and they're a little bit uniform in their placement. It feels like every third room there's a watermelon there. And what's with the weird metal objects? I'd be willing to bet that if you destroyed all the watermelons, something happens. So let's try it, shall we? I spent an extra 10 minutes on the map tracking down and eliminating all the melons. So does something happen? 
No, not as far as I can tell. Not a thing. I destroyed all the melons, checked on these weird metal pawn pieces, and nothing changed. There might still be something down here, but man, come on. I did all that math to tell you if you could survive off the water in that one room. I've paid my dues. Someone else can pixel hunt for secrets. All in all, this map is excellent. Not only in technique, but in ideas as well. It totally succeeds in evoking that weird, fever dreamish feeling that you'd expect from an eerie map like this. It's art. Good job, Shady Milk, you melon-obsessed bastard. The next map we're delving into is called GM underscore Dreams, or My Dreams in Source. Originally done by Own Doing and re-uploaded to the workshop by Plumy Cat. This is actually a pretty new map. As of writing this, it only came out a month or so ago. Surreal dreamscapes hot off the presses. There's actually a fairly prevalent scene on the workshop of users mapping their dreams in-game. If my memory stands, and on occasion it does, this trend actually goes back to the days of Garry'sMod.org, where one could find a hefty bulk of user-made content for Gmod before the days of the Steam Workshop. The website is gone now, though. As of about six months ago, it just redirects you to the workshop. It's too bad, since there was a lot of content uploaded there every day. I remember coming home from school and checking that website for new stuff. I think a fair number of the things uploaded there made it over to the workshop in one way or another, but there is still loads and loads of stuff that's probably just gone forever now. Much like real dreams, the dreams recreated as maps on garysmod.org have faded into peaceful oblivion. But not this one. This one's on Game Banana, a bastion of user-made content for a bunch of games that will probably be around for a long time to come. Oh, yuck. I forgot to turn off HDR. So we immediately get this weird bench facing a cliff face. Huh. Remember, this is the creator's own dream recreated in level form. This is a glimpse into their subconscious mind. A true window into the soul. Were they struggling with a tough decision? Did they feel trapped? We could swim down into a <coughs> dive bar. It's actually wicked nice here, so I sit down on the bench for a while and have a good think. I think about lots of things. I think about bowling balls and guacamole for some reason. I don't even like guacamole that much, it's just in my head. I think about Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End and how one of the comedic relief pirates is able to release the ocean goddess Calypso from her binds because the words of the ritual have to be said as if to one's true love, thus representing that his true love is the sea. I find myself thinking about video games and how there's a finite amount of them I can play in my lifetime. I don't know the number, but I know that it is finite, and I can't believe Incel Simulator is one of them. Let's move on. Inside, we have a Church of Gordon, a manager's office, and some music. Huh. Groovy. Thank you, Tree. Whoa. What is this place? Why is Fidel Castro here? My guess is the creator had to do a school paper on him or something. Holy crap. Look at this surreal scene here. This is exactly what dreams are like. A bunch of disjointed scenes and spaces that don't seem to connect, but they do anyways. Well, some of them. Sometimes I just dream about getting robbed by Jar Jar only to discover that I have the power to turn Gungans into rats. What is this place? I find myself thinking about where these spaces come from. Dreams come from reality. They always do. So is this barn a place that own doing spends a lot of time? Is this where they grew up? Who knows? That's the allure of this kind of thing. Well, that's a tonal change. What comes next is a fairly normal factory of some sort, with what I would call a major pollution problem. How would a factory deal with a cloud of gaseous fumes that just stays there, hovering over the workers' heads, always watching, always fuming, but never moving? Could you just vacuum it up? But that could make it angry. What if it's like the smoke monster from Lost and it starts making fools disappear? In this other room, we've got some more groovy tunes coming from this radio. Now is as good a time as any to bring up the fact that all the music in this map is 100% original and homemade by own doing themselves. And all of it is good. Huge Undertale vibes. Check out their YouTube channel, they've got some super interesting stuff on here if you like video games and chill music. 
Speaking of chill, peep this frickin' pool. Oh, I'd kill to have access to a pool like this. There's even a little cafe with a menu with such classic dishes like turtle rock stew, doo-doo burger, and slab of meat. Pretty cool spot until you go up to have a drink and are greeted with that all-too-familiar void of the other side. Oh, and this map can actually be labeled as educational if you're studying computer science in college because there's a shower here. Ah, I'm just messing with you. I got nothing against computer science majors. The shower. The rest of you motherfuckers smell like butt ass. You smell worse than the sports bros and all you do is code and play video games. You have no excuse for your aura to leave the room 30 seconds after you do. Just clean yourself. Around the corner we've got this cute little number. Look at this. I think it's interesting that no matter how many dreams you read about or play in Gary's Mod, there's always water where there shouldn't be. Maybe it traces back to our evolution, our time in the primordial soup. Oh, that can't be safe. Is that a giant cockroach? Ugh, can you imagine? Fuckers are already huge. Some of them can fly. I've had giant insects show up in my dreams too. It's scary every time. It's mostly just spiders for me, though. Since Own Doing is dreaming about cockroaches here, it's safe to assume they're from some place where they're abundant. Like Alabama or something. It actually looks a lot like those hex bug toys from years ago that would move around and adjust course if they bumped into something. Anyone remember those? Made memorable stocking stuffers. Yeah, school. Being back in school appears in a lot of people's dreams, including mine. Up until a couple of years ago, every time I'd be back in high school in a dream, it would be the dream that I had no idea where I was supposed to go for my classes, and that I would have somehow missed like a whole year's worth of assignments because nobody would tell me. I never dream that I'm climbing out of the window, though. Whoa. Looks like they bathed the frickin' stink spirit in here or something. This is just the PT hallway. I wonder where the dreams start and where they stop. From Own Doing's writing on the Game Banana post, they say that the map is made up of a bunch of dreams they had in 2023. I'd be willing to bet that this dark room is how the next one starts, because it stays creepy for a while. I end up staring at this light post for like three straight minutes just listening to the wind and watching the particle effect. I actually thought this was the end of the map, but across the street there's more. Huh. Smoke again? This is like the third time. I wonder if Own Doing's dreams have so much smoke in them because of the Canadian wildfires that got pretty bad last year. Where I lived at the time, which was like a 20 minute drive from the border of Canada, the smog wafting over from the north got so bad that people couldn't go out for a while. That would definitely have an effect on my dreams, and it probably did, and I just don't remember. GB Piranesi, huh? You know, some people say that you can't read text in your dreams or that it becomes garbled. That's just not true. I know for a fact that I've read stuff in my dreams. I particularly remember reading a note from someone I knew who had jumped forward in time that said, See you on your 80th. It got really strange after that, I think. So G.B. Piranesi was an Italian architect, for those of you who don't know like me. I had to look it up. I'm not going to hold you. I thought it was just a Counter-Strike map. I wonder if they were playing Counter-Strike Source at the time, or if they just took like an architecture class or something. Hey, we're in the pool rooms again. It doesn't last long, though. Damn, I wasn't expecting this map to be so long. How do you dream so much, Own Doing? Share your methods with me. I dream maybe once a month or less. Where the hell are we, man? This shit is crazy. So many places that are- whoa! So many places that are so nondescript, yet somehow so specific at the same time. We're somewhere, but nowhere. We're in no place. There's someone behind here, but the only thing I can make out is, oh my god. And I love me a good void playground. Hey, tell me in the comments, were you guys on team slide or team swing set? I myself was always partial to the swing set. Nothing else on the playground compared to jumping off the swing at full speed. Except maybe like a tire chain swing spun by an adult at like full speed, but I acknowledge it. That shit was dangerous. Hey, we made it. We made it through no place. Our reward is cake. Hell yeah. Great job, Undoing. Your dreams are so interesting. 
Even more so is the fact that you replicated them for everyone else to experience. It's such a weird sensation, man. All of these maps have it. You're just walking around in this weird place, alone. It's like it's for you, if that makes any sense. In a way, it is. It's eerie, interesting, artistic. These Source Engine levels have a certain something. An aura of nostalgia with a side dish of a slight creep factor. I mean it when I say that the Steam Workshop is up there with Steam refunds and Discord in terms of the good it has done for PC gaming. It puts the paintbrush in the hands of the users, of the everyday Joe. It allows anyone to be an artist to share themselves with others in a format that's easy and accessible. With a single click, you can download and install someone's entire dream journal spanning a year's worth of their subconscious thoughts and experience them for yourself. You can get creeped out by a void Taco Bell and a picky eater. You can ponder what it would mean to live in a truly liminal space. The degree of expression here is insane. During the Renaissance, visual media were paintings. At the turn of the 20th century, cinema captured and recreated reality on the screen for all to see. Now, in 2024, you can jump into and explore the reality behind the screen, unbound by the tethers of the cameraman. Anyone can make their own reality here on the Gary's Mod Steam Workshop page, and at that point, the only limit is your imagination. And Half-Life 2 assets made two decades ago. Wow, I had a lot of fun doing this, you guys. There is such a treasure trove of maps to look at, too. These were just three that I pulled out of the bag, and my god, is the bag overflowing. It gets to be that way because Gary's Mod has been on the internet for 20 years. It's come a long way, both in terms of the game itself and the user base. Even now, it has a new trend every once in a while. The latest one I remember is the next bots craze. I think YouTube sensations like Vanoss Gaming and Skibbity Toilet help keep it on the radar for a lot of young gamers. Well, there you have it. My first video that isn't a game review. What did you guys think? I was going to do more maps, but before I knew it, the video was already kind of long and I was trying to go for a snack and not a meal. Even editing this, I thought we landed somewhere in between, but no. This video is actually just as long as the last one. If you guys like this video and want more stuff like this, let me know. Shit, even if you don't let me know, I might still make more. That's how much fun it was. Alright, that's all I got. Remember to always look both ways before crossing the street. Stay temperate, and I'll catch you on the flip. See ya!